Anna. I should like to say how much I admire the way you're carrying the whole thing off. You're sweet, charming, smiling. <laughs> That's right. If you love listening to this show, please consider giving a rating and a review on Amazon Alexa or wherever you listen. We want to continue bringing you this amazing content, and part of our ability to do that means that we need a big audience. Now, it may not seem like much, but rating and reviewing the show will help more people find us, just like how you found this show. Simply on any podcast platform, search for a show, scroll down to the bottom, and push five stars. It's that easy. Thanks for supporting the show. Today, I'm joined by Laura McCord, who is Executive Director of Sustainability and Corporate Responsibility at KE Distributors. Uh, KE Distributor is a fresh and natural organic whole food foods distributor. So uh, welcome to the show today. Thank you. Laura, so my understanding is that you went to the University of Wisconsin at Madison for your master's degree, your alma mater, is that right? Yep, that's correct. All right. Well, you know, I, uh, I spoke at the university and I, I jokingly told them that I was accepted, but I didn't go because it was too cold. Instead, I went to another place that's very cold, uh, University of Chicago instead. But it, <laughs> I was very impressed with the university and, of course, the, you know, the, the faculty and the administration. How was your experience uh, at, uh, at Wisconsin-Madison? It was a great program. I was able to do their online coursework for sustainable management, and I think it really helped set the stage for my new position at Cahey. It gave me a great foundation and overarching concept for what this type of role would be. And it's interesting because in that area, you could really kind of sense the effects of climate change. And again, I think depending on the the kind of science studies, uh, it's not just about extreme cold. Sometimes actually you end up having warmer uh, winters, but also you have, you know, like last or some very interesting uh, Arctic, um, you know, storms that kind of hover for a while. So, so that region really understands intimately, especially the relationship with the lakes, the Great Lakes, you know, the impacts of climate change and so forth. Uh, can you tell us about Kihi Distributors, what do you guys do, and why is sustainability so important for the organization? Yeah, so we are a national, natural and specialty food distributor. Uh, we have warehouses uh, across the U.S. into Canada as well. We service over 30,000 retailers with over 60,000 different items. So it's important to us because we have a large carbon footprint with all of the transportation miles that we undertake to service our customers. So we also have a really strong cultural foundation in serving to make lives better and understanding the connection between people and planet and how those two are really connected for us means that we have to take responsibility for our impact on the environment as well if we really want to have an impact on serving other people. So, uh, you know, we are at the time of the recording, we're in um, early September and of course, we're many months uh, after the kind of the pandemic lockdown. Uh, in the early months, we had a lot of issues around supply chain and logistics, especially around you know basic food items. How did you guys deal with that? And I'm just curious, uh, you know, how did that uh, offset carbon footprint, but at the same time, cause some challenges for you guys? Yeah, well, I mean, prior to COVID, there was al already pressure on the transportation industry shortage of drivers and so forth. So kind of setting the stage with that. And then you throw in COVID where all of a sudden everybody is eating at home and you have a, a spike that you weren't predicting. So of course, there's going to be some shortages based on that increased demand, as well as all the way upstream that, you know, farmers weren't uh, ready for it. So they didn't have the ingredients, uh, getting the ingredients to some of the co-packers was also a challenge for suppliers. And we work with a lot of small suppliers, so they don't carry a tremendous amount of back stock to be able to accommodate um, a spike like that that's unforeseen. So from a sustainability standpoint, um, obviously the travel restrictions help uh, reduce everybody's carbon footprint. Um, 
But other than that, you know, we just transferred the energy cost from corporate to people's homes. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting perspective that I don't think probably enough people talk about is that, <laughs> uh, yes, we have actually reduced carbon footprint from a kind of metropolitan or maybe some of the key transportation and industrial perspective, but certainly uh, we still have absorbed it on a residential level. Uh, you've also started a couple of, um, you know, internal initiatives, uh, care trade and diverse trade within uh, KE. What are, what are those programs about? Yeah, so if you don't mind, I'll give you a little history first. Uh, KE Cares, I, I got to go on a trip to Africa with our philanthropic arm. And after that trip, it really kind of struck home of how can we do more and how we can have a greater impact. So after that trip, we started Care Trade, which was a way for us to identify brands that we already work with that are mission-based, that align with our dedication of serving to make lives better. So it's an application process, and we pick five suppliers each year to be in that program. And we just try to help them navigate through the distribution model. Uh, You would think selling food is easy, but it can be a little bit of a challenge. Every retailer does things differently. Um, So trying to help our suppliers navigate that. So that's one program. The other program is Diverse Trade, which was actually started uh, last year. And that's a way for us to recognize and celebrate our diverse suppliers in our portfolio. So whether that's minority-owned, women-owned, LGBT, veteran, uh, people with disabilities. That's terrific. Well, it sounds like uh, you have initiated a couple of great programs. So let's get into- excited uh, about it. Let's talk a little bit about the corporate big picture pers- uh, goals around sustainability. What are you guys looking to achieve? And if you could quantify those goals. Yeah, so right now we're focused on four main areas, energy, transportation, waste, and food waste. And my position is new. It's about a year and a half old. So over this past year was really trying to understand where we are today and then working with the leaders in each of those areas to understand what's realistic for us, what could we accomplish, uh, setting out some internal goals for us to reduce our carbon footprint in those areas. We haven't made a public uh, declaration yet around those just internal so far. Gotcha. Sounds like you have a lot of work ahead uh, as you're starting to kind of build this up from the, the from the ground up and then at some point get to a point where you have clear framework and clear objectives and numbers that you can start to share up publicly. Um, you mm-hmm. mentioned a number of areas that you guys are working on. Let's talk a little bit about food waste. Uh, okay. What is the current food waste uh, issue and the kind of volume and what are you guys looking to reduce it by? Yeah, so food waste can be a pretty large issue uh, area for us. Obviously, we have 13 different warehouses. Our demand fluctuates based on our retailers and so forth. So for us, it was first understanding where is the food waste coming from. We divide that out into warehouse generated. So that's kind of more what we're generating versus retailer generating out at the stores. And then we've implemented a, a couple of different programs and pulling different levers for how we can help reduce our food waste. Um, One of the programs is uh, partnering with an organization called Spoiler Alert, and they help find alternative avenues for where we can sell short-coded product instead of it ending up in a landfill. And we also committed to donating 10% of that salvage product to food banks and other charitable organizations. So at the end of the day, we diverted about 13 million pounds of food waste from going into a landfill. That's terrific. And again, I think that's a tremendous amount of volume given the fact that you guys are very much the supply chain when it comes to this category. Uh, You guys have also partnered with uh, Climate Collaborative, right, as well as uh, Clean Energy Fuel Corp. So on some of the other areas, what are you guys doing in terms of uh, reducing carbon footprint? Yeah, so partnerships are key. Uh, you can't do this alone. And I think what I find interesting about sustainability in general is that it's so customizable to your specific business. So we did partner with the Climate Collaborative and Dana Gunders, who's a food waste expert, uh, to create a study for how retailers can reduce their food waste at the retail stores. So it was a best practice guide. We talked to different retailers. We got what they were doing currently and created um, a tracking mechanism for other stores to use for how they can help reduce their food waste at the store level. 
That's terrific. So really a, a, a helpful tip that's based on science that's been made digestible for retailers to implement. That's, that's great. Um, I think I also mentioned Clean Energy Fuels Corp and um, how you guys are switching over different types of uh, fuel sources. Can you elaborate on that, please? Yeah, of course. Um, so we are testing out five renewable compressed natural gas trucks right now through uh, Clean Energy's Redeem program, where they are taking basically the methane from landfills and turning it into a fuel source, which is about 70% cleaner than diesel. So we're really excited about that. Um, transportation for us is our largest carbon footprint, probably twice as much as, as energy. So it's definitely an area that we need to tackle. Um, right now, the pilot is going really well. Our drivers are responding well to the trucks. They're enjoying them. Um, it was cost efficient to do. So they, they made it really easy to, uh, to make the change and to start going down this new road. Now, for you guys, uh, in terms of your physical assets, uh, how much of the fleet do you guys own outright, and the how and what percentage is actually done through contractors or you know truck drivers? Yeah, so we we lease all of our trucks, but all of the drivers are KHE employees, mm -hmm. and we have about six hundred trucks, and five of them right now are going to be running on the uh, RNG. Gotcha. And what other sources of fuels are you guys also contemplating? Right now, this is our main one. We are piloting also um, an electric truck, but the infrastructure just isn't there yet to make that a, a viable option, and the costs are still really high to make it feasible for a fleet of our size. Yep, makes sense. Um, I'm just curious, and you may not know this per se, but the methane from landfill, how um, consistent is the supply, and is that readily available across the country? Um, I can't speak to it like specifically, but I know that they do have a, a number of fueling stations and we also looked at our routes to be able to find the routes where it made the most sense. The issue right now isn't so much having the fuel supply, it's having the mechanics that are trained mm -hmm. to be able to service these trucks has been a greater concern for us than the actual fuel availability. Interesting, very interesting. And um, the last question I have for you is going to be really around, um, you know, optimization routes. A lot of these, uh, you know, distribution warehouse to the retailers, are they fairly predictable in terms of kind of common routes? Uh, or, of course, you have the peaks and valleys and seasonalities, but uh, what else can be done on the optimization or routes so that it's efficient for you guys uh, in terms of uh, increasing your margins, but also reduces the carbon footprint? Yeah, so our routes are pretty consistent. One of the areas of opportunity is really working with retailers for, for how they schedule and how they order product. A lot of retailers want as many deliveries as possible to make sure that their shelves are stocked. But a lot of the times, if they peeled back and went to going from three deliveries to two or to one delivery, they could still have adequate fill rate on their shelf and reduce their miles. So I think there's an educational component that needs to happen with the retailers to increase that partnership to understand what impact we can have. Uh, when we've done some analysis and we're looking at some uh, retailers that are ordering, let's say three times a week, over 90% of their orders are unique items that they're ordering. So they could really just place that order once a week and, and still maintain those fill rates. Sounds like uh, an opportunity for education and some, some training opportunities. But again, it's a, it's a you know, behavioral change issue. And of course, retail market is going to be fairly heterogeneous. So it's going to be difficult to you know, push it down. Uh, it's not like mm -hmm. a, within a corporate, corporate environment. Um, right. In terms of your role and kind of you know, the mission that you have in front of you, what, it, what do you envision for uh, KHE in terms of where you guys want to be able to reach in terms of sustainability and be able to, you know, again, publicly make those announcements? Yeah, so right now we're in the process of creating a sustainability council, which will help drive the direction of the organization, help influence it there. And I'm hoping through that that we'll be able to make a more concrete external commitment, uh, whether that's a 25% reduction by 2025 or carbon neutral by 2030. Um, I definitely want it something within the next five or 10 years 
Um, I know net zero by 2050 sounds great, but how many of us are still going to be working at the same company 30 years from now? So I'd like to do something faster, sooner, more tangible that we can see results on, report on results, hopefully inspire others to take action uh, and have it be a little bit more meaningful and, and sooner. You know, that is uh, music to my ears. And I think you make a really <laughs> valid point is that I think even 2030 to, to many companies, it's actually aggressive. But when you take into account the, the turnover aspects and just change in uh, guard or helm, you know, how do you make sure from a short term you still have some significant wins and have that greater velocity of change? So, and certainly when it comes to climate change, the change needs to happen sooner, not later. Absolutely. So with that, I've been joined by Laura McCor, who is Executive Director of Sustainability and Corporate Responsibility, Kehi Distributors. Thank you for joining today. Thank you for having me. If you've enjoyed this episode, take a moment to rate our show on any podcast platform that you listen to. Scroll down to the bottom and push five stars. It's that easy. And as always, thanks for listening.